dear students warm greetings as you already know that in our previous session we have already discussed about electricity and leds we discussed about the various symbols that we use in our electric circuits and we have also connected the cells in series as well as in parallels well in our today's session we are going to learn about the various effects of electric current so let's start our today's session students one of the most spectacular effects of electric current is its conversion into the heat you might have wondered that whenever you switch on an electric heater or an electric geyser in a few moments the water starts boiling and the heater starts to blow hot air now how does this happen whenever the electric current passes through a material every material has a tendency to offer some resistance or some hindrance to the flow of electric current this hindrance or this obstruction that is offered by an electrical conductor to the flow of electricity is known as electrical resistance this resistance is similar to the frictional force as you know whenever we rub our palms against each other some heat is generated here also so similar things happen whenever electricity passes through the electric conductor the conductor gets heat up and this effect is known as the heating effect of electric current now you might have seen that there are various appliances that run on this effect or this principle whether that is an electrical oven whether uh, that is an electrical geyser an iron or an electrical heater all of these appliances run on the principle of heating effect of current now how does all these appliances work when the electric current is passing through a conducting wire this resistance converts the electrical energy into heat energy and the material becomes hot so all the appliances such as electric heaters electric geysers ovens and all they work on this principle all of these appliances have a high resistance material which is known as the element in them this element becomes hot and these appliances run on this principle students the amount of heat generated by the different electrical appliances depends upon the strength of electric current that is running through these appliances and it also depends upon the size of the conducting material through which the electricity is passing these are the two factors that determine the amount of heat generated in these appliances students among the various appliances that work on the heating effect of the electric current one of the most common appliances that we use is a simple incandescent bulb so how does an incandescent bulb works this bulb works on the simple principle of heating effect of an electric current this bulb which you see at your home on the street or various other places it is made up of a very thin glass with a partial vacuum inside it and the argon gas is filled inside the bulb this bulb has a very high resistant a thin coil which is known as a filament fitted inside it this filament is made up of tungsten metal why tungsten metal it is only because that a tungsten metal offers a very high resistance and melts at a very high temperatures now as the electricity passes through this uh, filament this filament quickly heats up it heats up to more than 2500 degrees celsius and at this temperature the tungsten filament starts glowing and we get heat from the bulb so the argon gas which is filled in the bulb protects the filament and does not let it to break down so this is how an electric bulb works students as you know the electricity that is reaching our homes comes through the overhead wires and cables the amount of electricity that is coming to our home is not the same always it varies and sometimes it becomes too high and at that instant the heating effect may be too high and may cause short circuits and thus may be very hazardous for our home as well as for our workplaces so what should we do in order to overcome this issue we use a fuse in our homes and in our various electrical appliances so what is a fuse a fuse is a special type of a wire or rather you can say a fuse is a safety device 
which comes with a specified melting point against a specified amount of electric current. And if the amount of electric current exceeds that limit, the fuse melts, thereby breaking down the circuit and stops the flow of electric current and thus protects our electrical appliances and the electrical wiring present at our homes and the workplaces. We see this fuse, whenever it melts or breaks down, it must be replaced with the another piece of wire or another similar fuse which comes with the same resistance against the specified amount of electric current or else it may not work at the proper time and thus may cause the damage in our electrical appliance and also may cause the short circuits. Students, now let us try to understand another most important effect of electric current. Students, whenever the electric current is passing through a conductor, it not only becomes hot, but it also starts to behave like a magnet. And this effect is known as the magnetic effect of electric current or it may also be called as electromagnetism. Now let us try to understand this effect by making a simple electromagnet. What are the materials that we are going to use for making an electromagnet is a simple nail, a copper insulated wire and a small cell. Now let us make this electromagnet. First what we are going to do is that we are going to remove the insulation from both the ends of the copper wire and wrap it around the nail very tightly. And then we are going to fix the two ends of copper insulated wire to the two terminals of the cell that is the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Our electromagnet is now ready. If you put small uh, magnetic materials like small pins or nails near this nail, this nail will start attracting these small magnetic objects, thus indicating that the current when passed through the conducting wire has a magnetic effect also and this is known as electromagnetism. Students, so far we have seen magnets as bar magnet or a horseshoe magnet whose strength is permanent that is that can neither be increased nor decreased but the case is different in terms of electromagnets their strength can be increased or decreased by changing the amount of electric current passing through these wires and we can also change the strength of the electromagnet by increasing or decreasing the number of turns of electric wire that we have wrapped around the magnetic material these electromagnets are very useful to us. They are used in various electrical appliances like computers, televisions, uh, toys and the doorbells. So students, let us now try to understand the working of an electric bell on the principle of electromagnetism. This uh, electric bell consists of a small electromagnet that is made by wrapping insulated wire around a simple iron bar, attracting a small iron hammer against a metallic gong. So, when the switch is pressed, the current starts to flow through the circuit, the circuit gets complete and the coil starts to behave as an electromagnet, attracting the hammer and making it to strike against the metallic gong. But as the hammer moves towards the gong, the circuit gets broken and the current stops to flow through the circuit. The coil loses its magnetism and the hammer returns again to its normal position. As the hammer returns to the normal position, the circuit gets completed once again and the coil regains its magnetism, making it to strike again with the metallic gong. So this way, the hammer strikes the gong again and again, making the bell to work. So students, this is how the electric bell works on the principle of electromagnetism. So that will be all for this chapter. See you next time in the next chapter. Till then, take good care of yourselves. Bye.